this week on Why Math. My name is Paul, and we're here at the Aviation Center of Excellence. It's uh, Confederation College's building where we teach young men and women to build aircraft, fly aircraft, and maintain aircraft. Well, we have several aircraft in this building. We're looking at about uh, 30, just as a quick snapshot. Some of them are used to take apart and put back together again by our engineering department, the maintainers, the aircraft maintenance engineers to be. Uh, some of them of the same type are used on the other side of the building to learn how to fly which is a completely different set of skills, but uh, one cannot be seen uh, separate from the other. If you want to be part of any of these programs, one of the first things you have to think about is that uh, these, uh, these programs are math and physics driven. You need to have that math part into it. And that's one of the things we do differently in our flight school is that uh, we teach one person to do all the work, okay. but we also teach once you're in an airline environment, you will always have to work together. So in an airline environment, pilot flying, whoever that is for the day, or for the, for the leg, will be doing what you're doing. Okay. And then the co-pilot can do the gear up, change engine power settings, change radio frequencies, and all of that. Wow. So you divide up the tasks. Every response, whether it's an engine power setting, or whether it is a flight attitude change, will always have a response. Right, yeah, I see I'm pulling the nose up a bit again. Exactly. You want me to do a turn? You can do a turn. Okay, what do I need to think about when I'm turning? When you're turning, you're going to have, uh, the wings aren't going to be uh, perpendicular, pardon me, there's okay. the math again, to uh, the gravity, so we're going to sink a little bit if we do. And, and you can see that right here, see we're sinking a bit, so okay. you have to put a minute bit of back pressure to arrest the descent. Okay. Pull the stick back a little bit. Very nice. See? You're neither climbing nor descending, so you're in a perfect level turn at the moment. Very nice. As a student, you spend about uh, well, a couple of dozen hours in here, over two years. Primarily, we will have you uh, be in the aircraft. So the airport is about five miles away. Okay. And we're currently doing 150 miles an hour. Math, how long is it going to take you to get there? Five miles away at 150 miles an hour? Yeah. As a point for your students, this is, where math, this is where math will come in. You have your instruments telling you a lot of information, however, you need to figure out and know for sure. If you're doing 120 miles an hour, in a minute, how much are you going to travel? Five oh, miles. There you go. Almost. Okay, if you're doing 120 miles, you're going to do two miles a minute. Two when, miles a minute. Yeah. So if you're five miles away, in two and a half minutes you're going to be at your, des gonna you're gonna be be at your destination. So I need to start descending then probably. Do exactly. I? Well, the airport is at uh, again it's five miles. We're going away from the airport right now, so oh. we're going to slowly descend back through the clouds. Okay. One of the things when you're descending is that um, you're going to overspeed because okay. now gravity is helping you. So I'm going to take a lot of power away from okay. you as to not overspeed. So this is what happens when an engine fails. Oh boy. Oh my gosh. Control the aircraft. Control the aircraft. Oh, I'm controlling the yeah. aircraft. That was a bit of a shocker, eh? So those are things you wouldn't try in the air. No, but very good to learn. But now you're learning. You, we can ice the airplane up, simulate that it's full of ice, which we would wow. never try in the air. No. It's extremely dangerous. But here, our students learn to recognize it and deal with it. It's not an emergency unless you panic. That's right. Anything can happen as long as you deal with it, it's okay. 